Here comes tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. You all did well. Wow. That works. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. This movement we call UFBL began with a resurrection. In the early 50s, a young woman, having gone to the doctor and was told that she had some time, a few months or so to live, decided to take action, to resurrect her body. To resurrect actually means to restore. When most of us hear resurrection, we think about being dead physically and coming back to life based on some miracle. But the miracle occurs from the time you decide, I don't like what I have. I want to experience something else. It is called rebirth. It is called born again. It is called repentance. It is called so by so many names. It is even called reincarnation. <coughs> to bring your body or your experiences back in line with the truth of your being. If you are a spiritual being, and spirit is perfect, whole, complete. If you are not operating on the, the, in the plane of perfection, then you need to be resurrected. You need to be resurrected first in mind. Mind is the cause of everything happening in our world, our life, and our fears. It says that according to our, what we believe, that our experiences are reflections of what we hold in mind. Therefore, resurrection is first and foremost a mental upliftment that takes place when you realize who and what you are. All healing, whether it's in the body, in our psychological state, in our bank accounts, in our relationships, begin in the mind. Paul said to the Corinthians, I die daily. To die in scripture means to separate yourself from what is available to you. What is available to you? In Genesis it says that when God created the universe, God created a garden in which everything was good. Our desire through resurrection is to experience the good that is provided for us. Jesus calls it the kingdom of heaven, which he said was within us. That means that all things good are already within <coughs> us. They are not to come. The health is not a place I say low here or low there. Abundance is not a place that I could point out. It's a state of knowing that I am living the life that Jesus said was possible for me, which is abundant living. Abundance in all good things, in health, in wealth, and in happiness. 
There can be no death if the potential for life is there. You can't resuscitate the hopeless. If there is no hope to live, well, you're really dead. Once there is hope and a little light of possibility is seen, resurrection begins. It doesn't matter what you may have suffered, where you may have suffered, and by whose hands you think you may have suffered. Once you realize the possibility that you could return to that state of grace, resurrection begins. Resurrection only happens when we disconnect from our spiritual self. For instance, most of us believe that we are only human. And then because of that, we are subjected to everything human. But I want to tell you something this morning. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. That means everything possible in spirit is possible for me wherever I am. Isn't that a good start? When I go through the Bible, I meet a lot of people who had suffered out of ignorance many conditions. But when they came to know who they were, healing took place. The restoration to that divine state is available to anybody. One of the things that I do know is every human experience encounters some form of difficulty after a while. That the material is subjected to all sorts of things, but not the spiritual. And the spiritual has the power to quicken and awaken the material. So when you go to the Bible, you see people being healed. You cannot be healed if you were not healed before. Healing means to be restored. In the beginning, all of us, uh, at oneness with spirit. But through our thinking, we have moved away from spirit. And we have to become, we, be, we, we begin to believe that we are the condition affecting us. So we say what? I am S-I-C-K. Then we say I am P-W-R. Then we say, I am U-N-H-A-P-P-Y. Well, whatever you put and attach to your living truth, which is the I am, you must become. Because I am is the first part of the verb to be. So whatever you declare yourself to be, you must be. Resurrection begins when you change the words associated with the thoughts that you think. When you realize that the I am part of you is life itself in you, you stop blaspheming against it. You stop cursing it and you start to glorify it. You start to praise it 
So you start to praise your I am. I am healthy. I am whole. I am complete. I am happy. I am successful. I am prosperous. I am wealthy. And whatever I declare I am, I must be. Resurrection is a state that comes from knowing that potentially you could be anything you want to be in the negative as well as the positive. Change can only come when something is replaced by another. Life being lived can only come when we change our thoughts about life and stop focusing on death. Most of us, from at some time in our lives, focus on death and where we are going after death. And we are afraid to die. Some of us are afraid to stay alone in the cold earth. Some of us are afraid to let our bodies be burned because we believe we will still feel. <laughs> when you are separated from life, you have no knowledge of what life is. And some of us, we may not be in the hole or we may not have been burned, but some of us do not know what to live is. Because we focus on what is not supposed to be and we create what is not supposed to be as our reality. We allow fear and worry to build up these massive thought ideas, thought seeds in our minds that will always produce after their comes. What you think about, you will constantly bring about. And you will replenish your experiences out of what you think. Because every seed will bring forth fruit and seeds after its kind. When we pull down life, some of us ask, well, what am I living for? Life isn't worth it. By saying that, you have already committed suicide. <laughs> because if you condemn life, you can't live it. Because to live is to experience. To experience life with all its joys, with all its riches, with, with all its opportunities to be more, to de do more, and to become more. So we need to replace the way we think about ourselves and this glorious quality that keeps moving in and through us called life. Life is like energy or currency or currents that flow through us that keeps, keep us actively engaged in living. Life is like the battery in the car that supplies the energy and you can use it however you want. You can leave it in the garage and never charge it. The more you have, the more you use, is the more you receive. The more you use life, is the more you shall have. The less you use life, is the less you will have. You ever sit down for too long and can't get up? Well, we sit down mentally sometimes for too long 
Do you realize the more you think, the less likelihood you might end up without memory? Because whatever you don't use, you lose. Are you actively working on projects in your life? Are you mentally engaged with living? When given a chance to sleep in or to get up in the spring and plant a garden, which one do you choose? Ask yourself. Do you promise yourself that you will do it tomorrow? Hmm? Do you tell yourself that the weather outside is too nice f for me to go out in it? Because some of us do that. Every opportunity that we have, we need to move from the place that we were. To live means to move from the place that you were. To move mentally, to move emotionally, to move financially. If you started out with a quarter in your pocket and you end up with a quarter in your pocket, you have not moved. And Jesus gave this wonderful example of a man had three servants and he was going to a far country and he called one and he gave him one talent, one ability to live. He called another one and he gave him two opportunities to increase. And he gave the other one three, the opportunity to maximize your skills, your talents, and your energy. When he came back, the one with the one runs up to the master and say, Master, wow, I have taken care of the talent you gave me. I buried it in the ground. Because I know that you are a hard task master. So I didn't want anybody to get it. The one with the two said, I've invested it. I have brought increase. Here is the crease, increase. And the one who maximized it, who had the three, he took everything from them and gave to him because he used it wisely. Some of us have been schooled. When we reach a certain age, we must stop living and start acting like our ancestors did. Get a rocking chair. Get a corn pipe and smoke the living daylight out of your life. No. Life does not have a recall on it. If you don't leave, live it, you don't have it. And a lot of us who believe, or a lot of you who believe in reincarnation, you believe you're coming back and you will get from the point you left it at. Now is the time. Now is the moment. Now is for living. Forget theology and forget the theories of philosophers. Life is given to be lived now all the characters that Jesus met that had a need they experience resurrection now Jesus could have told, told to them well I notice you are dying go ahead and die and when you come back I will give you what you want. It says that in his presence, everything that had a deficit 
was corrected. Because why? This is the opportunity given to us to live. Ain't no coming back to continue the path that you messed up or you didn't use. Because whatever you practice here, you're going to practice on the other side. If you don't know what life is here and use it here, you can't use it because you will have the same mindset and you will operate out of practice the same way. The old man must die. The old man means what? That part that was governed by old concepts, old beliefs, old habits that I picked up that did my parents no good. Children, move away from your parents. Don't let them control your thinking. Use them as the, as the platform to extend your life. Don't, wanna, don't ever wish to become what your parents are. Move past that. Strive to be the best that you can be. Let the old in you die. So every day, as Paul says, I die daily because why? I realize that rebirth is every day. If I am not willing to die or to get rid of the old every day, I can't. I, I, I look at the trees, you know. They are transforming every day. They lose some to gain some. If you don't lose, you can't gain. If you don't let go, you can't encourage more to come to whole. We do that because we get trapped into believing that everything that comes near to us, we have to hold on to the end. No. Even in your relationships, you need to grow in your relationships. Every night or every Friday night should not be a fish fry night. <laughs> you need to apply new things in life. You need to do new things and wake up every morning with an objective in your mind. I want to live. I want to grow. I want to resurrect into something new. I want to be transformed into something new. I was a truck. I don't want to be a truck anymore. I want to be something bigger than a truck. Do you want to be more than you are right now? That's resurrection. That's rebirth. Do, when you look down the pipeline of your life, what do you see? What do you see? In the same house? Doing the same old thing. You know, some of us buy cars and put it in the garage and don't use it on, so they become antiques. Some of us buy furniture and cover it in plastic so that we don't use it. <laughs> Some of us build a fantastic kitchen and cook outside. <laughs> Use is the law of increase. The more you use it, is the more it will increase. Wow. To him who hath, more is given. He who has none, even the None is taken away. 
It means that the more you use is the more your ability and the more possibilities come. You see more. The more you get engaged in life is the more you get excited about producing more, being more, in experiencing more, expressing more. And you can't be stagnant. You wake up every morning with hope for something better. You don't live with despair. This is the message of the Universal Foundation for Better Living. Health is your divine birthright. If you don't have it, claim it and start looking for it. Look everywhere for you. Travel the entire globe and look for, for it. Be motivated to search. Jesus said, the more you seek, is the more you will find. Life is about seeking, knocking, asking. Don't be afraid to ask. If you need more beans, more beans, please. Whatever you have need of, ask for it. It is your right to have it. You didn't came here to stagnate and to suffer because you're stagnating. Wherever you are, you are in the right place to have more. Discover that. It is out of sometimes feeling limited. And waking up to the possibility of being filled that we seek to be filled. Sometimes spirit drags us down so low to wake us up. So that we can live. The prerequisite for living is to always remain open and receptive wherever you are. Declare wherever you are, I know nothing. I am open to receive. I have nothing. I, I who have nothing. Make up your mind to receive. This should be a natural state of mind. Staying open and receptive. You do not know who is in the midst of you and what they have that you can use. When your mind is closed or your hands are closed, you cannot hold anymore. Walk like this with your hands open. Not begging anyone, but acknowledging that the universe is your source and your supply. And wherever you are, you are now willing to receive. Wow. Well, same thing mentally. Open your mind and realize you know nothing. You've never been to this moment before. How do you know? What to do in it? Let spirit direct you. Change brings new behavior. You know, a lot of people come and say, well, I have changed. They're speaking the same way. They're acting the same way. And their habits are the same. When there is a change inside, there must be a change on the outside. If there is no change on the inside, there can be no change on the outside. So you can tell me whatever you want. I know you by the fruits that you bear. See, we only know people by their words, their actions, and their reactions. There are two marvels, two genes. But when you describe their behavior to me, I know which one you're talking about. Your name represents 
your nature. Who you are comes forth when your name is spoken. So if there's no change and you're still bringing forth the same fruit, well, you could tell me you're changed, but you're not. When Saul of Tarsus had his experience and had overcome his shortcomings, he became known as Paul. You knew that. When Peter, who was called Simon, had his change, he was called Peter. Upon whom all belief is based. Peter represents faith. It is upon your faith that what you believe sits. Change comes when we are willing to surrender to spirit because the only resurrecting force is the spirit of God in us. For of ourselves we can do nothing. Only God in us can do it. And don't fight to change. Decide a change is necessary. And just listen to spirit and spirit will guide you. Don't go to anybody and say, well, I want to change, help me. They can't help you. They need to change too. Because if they're encouraging them, encouraging you to come to them, they need to get rid of that ego-based thought. Change brings newness. Change brings vitality. Haven't you noticed when you decide to make a change, how energized you become again? Huh? When you decide to wake up in the morning and get up, go to the bathroom, take care of your body, and decide to go out, don't you feel nice mm -hmm. and excited? Yes. Do you have that same feeling when you stay in bed? Stay in the night clothing. Stay with the effects of the night on your face. Looking in the mirror. You feel to go back because you can't even stand yourself. Wherever you are is a time to get up. Make the decision to live a healthy happy and prosperous life and begin the resurrection process. Now is the appointed time. Now is the day of salvation. You know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistle? No. What do you have in your mind that needs to be changed? Just take a moment. Ask yourself, do I really want to resurrect, to be reborn into health, into abundance, and into happiness? Then ask yourself, what thoughts are keeping me down? What emotions, what cravings are keeping me down in the grave? Why does it appear that life doesn't bring me any energy with it? Why am I not excited about living? Why am I so dark and full of despair. 
and then listen to the voice within yourself says, I am here to help you live life and live it abundantly. I am here with you always. Wherever you are, I am. That wherever you are, abundance is your birthright. Listen to that voice. That suffering is not your birthright. It is a means to help you claim your birthright. Tell yourself, I can no longer live this way when life is meant to be lived abundantly. Let this be a moment for you that transformation could come, resurrection, and you can feel yourself a new person in Christ. God bless you. against the wall and I feel all hope is gone I'll just lift my head up to the sky and say help me to be strong oh, I just can't give up now I've come too far from where I started to leave me no no you didn't bring me out here to leave me lonely even when I can't see clearly I know that you're with me so Just the same. I can't give up now.